Hello, folks. Come on into the room. What room, you ask? Well, that depends on how we turn these knobs. That's right. Today, we're going to have a good quick look at the reverb. I'm going to try and not get too technical. We're going to put this in a nutshell, and then I'm going to explain what these knobs do for you. Okay? All right. Let's start the show. Okay, so like I said before, I'm not going to get too overly technical uh, with a reverb, but in a nutshell, if you don't know what a reverb is, you're essentially simulating a room. For example, if I were to put a snare or hi-hat inside this room in the center, it's going to sound different than if I were to put it in the end of this hallway, right? And it's going to sound different if you're standing right beside the hi-hat or snare or if you're in the, do the doorway. Um, and so basically, realize that everything you do inside this reverb is in one way or another simulating that movement or that kind of space that you're creating. Okay? All right. So, just like most plugins, let's divide it up into sections. Okay? First, you have this screen called Late and right in here. Okay? And all these knobs here are relating to the late mix. If I have this set at zero, none of this does anything. I can turn these up, I can do whatever I want, and it's going to have zero effect on anything. Okay? So, for now, I'm going to leave the late mix all the way down, because then obviously what's left over are the things on the margins here, like here and here. Okay? And this is where we're going to create the size of our room. So, before I do that, Let's have a listen to what I've created here. And it's just a simple hi-hat sound. Let's, let's hear. Yeah, a really sharp hi-hat sound. It's a closed hi-hat. I wanted just a sharp tick because I didn't want to confuse any kind of uh, any kind of noise that happens inside the sample with reverb, which would be easy to do. Okay, so it's just a sharp tick. And uh, and it's not it's a little bit abrasive on the ears, but it's going to serve the purpose. And this way, you just can't get confused between the sample and the reverb. Okay, all right. So, like I was saying before, let's solo the reverb here. If we have the late mix turned down, none of this means shit. This doesn't do anything for you, and that's good. Let's listen to it, and I'll prove it. See. If I turn that up, it should be insane reverb right now, but it's not. And no matter what I do, I can change things around. Nothing is happening. Okay? All right. So, what we're doing first is choosing the kind of room do we want. Do we want a room or a hall? Right? Because obviously there's a pretty big difference. If we look at, you know, here's a room. A drum set in this room is going to sound a lot different than at the end of that hallway. I'm sure you would agree with that, okay? And uh, and the size of the room is, well, I don't know why they put it in percentage, but like, is it 200% big? <laughs> or is it 50.1% uh, big? And so essentially, you're just choosing the size of your room, okay? And the difference being that this is going to be a lot more slapbacky than this is sound a little bit farther away in the size of the room here okay so let's just put it at a quick hundred percent right it's kind of in the middle right now pre-delay is how long does it take for any reverb sound to affect uh, after the original sound has hit so if I put this on a hundred milliseconds you can see there's a delay it goes tick and then tsh with the reverb and that's super cool because if you're doing a vocal you can put this on say I don't know put it on like 50 milliseconds right so that your vocal your vocalist sings and then 50 milliseconds later the reverb kicks in and in that 50 milliseconds set a delay with a bunch of repeats that only last 50 milliseconds and it gives your vocal a very uh, very spatial feeling without muddying it up. But we'll get into that later. That's a bit of a technique that isn't just concerning reverb that, that we'll talk about at another time. Okay? So it's just recognize that pre-delay is the amount of time it's going to take before the reverb actually reaches your ear. Okay? Now, diffusion 
if I turn this all the way down, it's a lot like this room right here. Uh, it, say there's not even any windows on this room. It's just straight flat walls. Well, what's going to happen if you hit a snare here? The sound's going to bounce and hit and reflect straight off. Okay. And so we can tell uh, how that sounds by turning this down and let's have a listen. Right. So the sounds just bouncing around like ricocheting off of the walls. If I turn up the diffusion all the way, let's look at Joe Massenberg's room. Now, what do you think is going to happen when a sound hits this wall? Well, of course, uh, it's not just going to reflect straight back out and make give that ping pongy kind of sound. It's not going to do that. It's going to hit this and just scatter everywhere and just kind of make a mess of the sound and just and just shatter it all over the place, which is really cool. And man, I wish I could hang out in this room and just try some stuff. Imagine dusting this room, right? Like who's the person that's got to go in there with like a Swiffer and dust all that? Okay, that's besides the point. But let's hear it with full diffusion. Right, so when the sound hits the wall, it just breaks apart and shatters into a million bits. And then that's what you're left with. Okay, now skipping right over to here, we have width. So this is kind of, I think of this as, are you standing in the center of the room or are you kind of just standing at the doorway of the room? And I'll show you what I mean. If you're wearing headphones and this will make more sense, but uh, in a nutshell, that's how I think of it, right? You're standing in the doorway and you've just stepped into the room, right? That kind of makes sense. So yeah, so you can just kind of dial that up to taste. Of course, the mix is how much of my dry signal is getting mixed with the reverb signal. And because I have this on a reverb track, I'm going to leave it on full mix. And that's how it defaults. When you load a reverb into the effects track, it just knows that you're going to want it on full mix. Because why would you? Yeah, you you know what I mean. Okay, so that leaves us with uh, with the late mix right here. Okay, so this one's a, a little bit trippy first of all the late mix is different than the regular reverb because it's it's like let me see where's that hallway it's like if your drum set was down at the end of this hall and you're right here by the time the sound reaches you it will have developed in a certain way by the time it gets to you does that make sense did i say that clearly enough it's it's well let's have a listen let's check it out okay so if I have my late mix all the way up, uh, and we'll just put these somewhere normal for now. We'll just open it up. Okay. Uh, let's have a listen. Right. Pretty bizarre. Okay. So this is how long is it lasting before it goes from making its reverb sound initially all the way to no sound at all. So obviously if I turn it to uh, 700 milliseconds or so, and I just play one little blip, right? It takes 770 milliseconds to end. If I put it on 31 milliseconds, right? It takes forever. Let's not wait for that because that's insane. Build up is kind of how much does that sound? Uh, see how it jumps back? It's almost like a delay at that point. Build up is how long does it allow those to to kind of resonate out? So if I turn this all the way up, right? Now it really does sound like it's at the end of a hallway. And if I go like this, that's like. I, I wouldn't even know what kind of tunnel that would be or hallway, but that would be long. I can say that much. Okay, so build up is kind of, here it's almost acting like a delay where it's going ch -ch -ch -ch, and there they're all kind of blending into each other. Okay, and now here is the, well, I can show you this more easily if I turn these up and I can move them around. Now remember, these knobs only work if your late mix is turned up because you're blending the sound of the room that you've created on these margins with the sound that we're creating inside this late mix kind of window here. But for this example, I'm just turning this all the way up so you're only hearing what's inside here. Okay, now let's listen to the difference when I move these around.
Okay, so you can tell right away that it's almost acting like a filter, uh, and this is the resonant frequency, and I'm just basically uh, allowing it to or cutting it off at a certain point or not, which is super handy because often in vocals you'll have something that's really in the center like that and you won't really peek it out. Uh, well, I mean, it depends on how you do your vocals, but everyone's different. Uh, but you can hear as I move it up, it gets a little more hissy, right? I hope you can hear that. Let me turn up this and let's make sure we really get that. right okay so the important thing to take away from this late mix kind of thing here is one how long is it going to take for the sound to go back to zero okay and that's you know you'll see this on every reverb plugin ever is the reverb time uh and that's just it's a pretty key feature build up is how much is that are those kind of uh almost delayed sound delay uh what would you call them like the delays, how much are they going to blend together, right? So a lot smoother is a, is a high buildup, and a lot more choppy is, is a low buildup, okay? And then here you can think of these as your filter, okay? And you can hype the frequencies at the filter, or you can not hype the frequencies at the filter. And remember that these only have effect on a late mix. So this is essentially a mix knob for within your reverb. Here you're not hearing anything inside there and there you're only hearing what's inside here. The other important thing is now let's look at the tank effects. Okay. If I add, I don't know, let's do something obvious. What's obvious? Like a tree monster. Like that's a pretty bizarre thing and I'll just make it so that it's super obvious. Okay. I've added a tree monster to the tank effects. And what that means is basically this late mix is only, the only thing this tree monster is picking up is the late mix. Okay. So let's, let's have a listen. All right. So right now we're not hearing the tree monster and we're not hearing anything inside the late mix. We're only hearing the room as we set it. If I turn this up, Now you're hearing the tree monster and the late mix as we picked it inside here, and that's it, right? I'm just turning this on and off so you can see the difference between it on and off. Okay, does that make any sense? So that means that anything you put in the tank effects is only affected by the late mix, and you can blend that effect plus the late mix in with the room that you've created on these margins, which is super cool. Because if you put something, you know, a little bit less obvious, like even just like a chorusing effect, right? We'll turn the mix all the way up. And uh, you, I mean, you can play with those how you want. And now you can kind of create an interesting reverb. Right? Then I'll bring my actual original sound back in. Right, so you can I can leave it to you to imagine all the crazy things you can put in this tank effects and uh, and blend into your reverb to make it really tasteful and create an interesting space. Uh, and of course, if you have all these cool uh, um, presets here, like if you I don't know where's one that has a tank effects. I don't know. In any way, like you could play around with that, throw different effects into the tank and see how they affect your reverb when you bring up the late mix. Wet effects is it's affecting uh, the rest of it, basically. And that effect gets turned up when you turn up the mix. It's like any other wet effects inside any other device inside of Bitwig, where if you put a device in here and it's a crazy, you know, effect of some kind, uh, it, this becomes basically the wet dry mix of that effect alongside this effect. Okay. All right. So let me just, I want to make sure that I've wrapped this up kind of in a tight little bowl for you. Okay. So late mix, uh, this window in the center here doesn't mean shit if this is turned down. Okay. When you turn it up, this is the only thing that matters. Okay. And you can say how long it takes for it to return to zero. You can kind of set your filters, which remember, these are now impacting what's inside your tank effects because your tank effects is only concerning the late mix. Okay. 
All right, if I turn this all the way down, I'm considering the room that I'm creating on the outside here. Okay, is it a room? Is it a hall? Is it 200% big? Like 200% of what? All right, it could be like a matchbox. Well, no, it's not. But anyway, just listen to it and play with those values. Okay, and then your pre delay, how long does it take before the reverb sound actually reaches your ears? And then, of course, your diffusion. If you want to be like Joe Massenberg here, you can turn that all the way up. If you want to be a little bit more normal than that, then you would have this down a bit because it's still going to diffuse a little bit when it hits these surfaces. And that's why they kind of make these interesting textures. And so, in that case, maybe you can turn it down a little bit like that. Okay. All right, I hope that did something for you. I hope that cleared up a little bit of, about this reverb. I know when I first opened, I was like, what the hell? Am, what is all this? And then it took me a minute to realize that under the late heading, uh, that's what this was concerning, right? Because I'm not used to this little reverb. I actually use like Abbey Road Plates by Waves and uh, Akon Digital. I like their reverb and, you know, Lexicon. Those are great reverb plugins. And they're all a little bit different. But in a nutshell, they're all just creating a space for you to uh, to to play an instrument in, so it doesn't sound like you've just recorded the signal straight into your uh, microphone like this. That's a much less interesting hi hat than if you had some reverb on it, isn't it? Right. Okay, kids. I hope that did something for you. I'll see you next time in the next video. Take care.